Mushroom Wonderland. What's going on, everybody? Aaron Hilliard here, Mushroom Wonderland. Today, I'm just going to go take a foray through the forest, just me and my dog. And we're going to just look at mushrooms in the woods, see what's growing out here, right in the height of mushroom season. This is typically the best time of year to be foraging wild mushrooms. October 15th, normally all mushrooms are growing by now, save for a couple that kind of like a heavy frost to get going. But this year has been a little bit untypical. It was a really hot, dry summer. We kind of shifted into fall but it's still been relatively dry out so it's not like in years past where mushrooms were just carpeting the forest floor wherever i go um, you got to look a little bit harder this year so if you're kind of discouraged and you're not having the best luck finding mushrooms this year uh, it is kind of a weird year so i'll just say that but it doesn't mean that there aren't mushrooms out here all kinds of mushrooms but not as many as typically walking on some old tree farmland and I'm gonna just point at mushrooms and try to describe what they are and if there's any good ones they're gonna go in my basket and I call my backpack my basket but I just carry a backpack with a brown paper bag inside of it just come to this spot by this wetland if you look on this dead alder tree right here we've got a big flush of pleurotus uh, oyster mushrooms and they love wetlands and they love these alder trees and you see it's just really kind of a beaver swamp here and uh, yeah, they're pretty high up on the tree. Um, if you're desperate, you could find a way to get those down, either climb the tree or you could just like tape your pocket knife onto a long stick and kind of saw them off of the tree. But that's a pretty nice flush of oyster mushrooms. That's a choice edible that you can find in a gourmet grocery store. So Pleurotus ostriatus growing right here in the PNW. Those are going to stay where they are. There's Gunner, the trail runner. He's a big dog. We're gonna we're gonna cut through this kind of. Oh, look at what we got here. Oh, beautiful. This is an amazing cauliflower mushroom. Would you look at that? This is Sparasis radicata. This is uh, the northwest version of the cauliflower mushroom. There's really no lookalikes. Very unmistakable mushroom, and it's always growing here at the base of a big old rotten conifer stump this is an old one interesting thing about sparasis is that it has a tap root that comes off of that and the, it'll be like six feet long so it starts way down underground and it reaches its way all the way up through this rotten wood until it can get to the air and grow this beautiful cauliflower on here and uh yeah it's a super choice edible sometimes it can get some bugs in there you can rinse it out or use salt water bath to kind of get the bugs off. I did a whole video about these, so check that out. That one is definitely going in the bag. Cut off this big nice chunk here. I just want to show you this. It's kind of tangled into the needle duff down here, but man, if you could get at the bottom of this, it is like a snake. It just goes way underground. Oh, it broke off. But uh, but yeah, this is kind of the base of the Sparasis radicata. Uh, that is a gnarly thing, and it has this just huge root that runs way underground. If you were to carefully dig that out, you'd be surprised just how huge and hardy of a mushroom that is. It's pretty dirty when it's under the needle duff like that, but I think uh, we'll be able to rinse that off. I'm going to cut this. This chunk away and again it's not harming this mushroom it has served its purpose it has grown up through the pine needle duff to the surface it's released its spores spores are released from all over the surfaces of these leaves if you want to call them that and so it served its purpose it's just going to decay so better put it in the basket and take it home to cook it cauliflower mushroom definitely one of my favorite mushrooms to take home so that's going in our basket so this is kind of an interesting thing and if you ever walk and just see a random hole dug like this clearly something was dug out of here and a lot of times this will be a truffle that was in there and these squirrels can smell them and they stow them away for winter time they just have a really good nose for them so if a truffle dog bring your dog out here to the forest then your dog could be making these holes and finding truffles for you how cool would that be Again, I can see all these spots where something has been digging. And uh, there are 
scleroderma there's types of like earth ball oh see look at that there was definitely something growing right here uh you can even see the encasing of it so the wildlife knows what's up man and uh yeah i think that was an earth ball scleroderma you can see the outside of it right there but they also be looking for them truffles so there was another one right down in there and uh another hole right there so whatever this animal is right here was just loving them these mushrooms need an incredible amount of rain to get going so uh, everybody always underestimates it's like oh it rained last night that means mushrooms are going to be up today no it takes a little while so be patient this is a very typical PNW second growth forest. A uh, pretty large size fir and hemlock growing back here. Oh, the hum of large equipment in the background where they're clear cutting beautiful mushroom habitat. But uh, it always sucks when you have like a really good mushroom patch and then you show up one day and they've moved in the bulldozers and they're doing that. It's like, dang it, gotta keep looking. All right, so I've just been walking along Man, we've been walking for like 20, 25 minutes now and have only found just a few mushrooms. And this forest is usually chock full. I found every kind of mushroom you could want. Chicken of the woods, lobster mushrooms, chanterelles, shaggy mane, oyster mushrooms, cauliflower mushrooms, bluets, and all the different kinds of beautiful cordonarius. Uh, everything grows out here. Matsutake. Um, but this year is just super untypical. There just isn't a lot growing. But right here... We see a little patch of mushrooms. These uh, these might look a little bit familiar to you uh, because their genus grows all over the place. If you look underneath, it's got this spongy looking surface. And actually the holes are pretty big. They're called pores. And on this particular one, these holes are very big and webby looking. And the top is very textured. And I can assure you when this is dry, it's like furry. And the stem is furry. And I talked about this on a recent foray video. But this is this is in the genus Suillus. And this is in the family Boliticeae, but it is in the genus Suillus, so it's not a it's not a Boletus. Um, but it does have that sponge surface underneath the bottom. And uh, this one, you can tell the difference because uh, Boletus species, these pores are way smaller. They're called stuffed pores and so they you know when they're young it'll be just like totally solid looking like very very tiny pores these ones are huge and the it just has a distinct look this is suillus lackeyi and uh it is uh one of many species of different suillus and you can see these growing outside of like mcdonald's and walmart like in the beauty bark and on grass like grassy areas on the sides of like elementary schools around here you see big flushes of a different species but same genus suillus and you can tell by that the way that sponge looks it's got those big old pores on it i just want to share a little bit of my experience with you about finding a new mushroom patch you know sometimes it can be extremely discouraging you walk along trails forever and you never seem to find the mushroom you're looking for and a lot of the time it's because somebody else already walked by there and picked that mushroom so you got to learn to get off the trail a little ways if you want to find yourself a good mushroom patch and I have spent countless hours stumbling around in the woods to find nothing. But you know what I did find? I found places where they aren't growing. You know what I mean? So that's just as important as finding Oh, there's an airplane, dude. This is like they're taking over the forest out here. But anyways, so when I'm out here right now is the... Gosh. All right. I think we're ready now. So when I come out here in this forest, especially right now, it is the height of porcini season here in the pnw and they were so hard to find i spent like 20 years stumbling around in the woods until i found some that actually recur in the same patch every year and one thing about porcini here is that they like to associate with pine so there's pine trees intermixed out here and they're kind of rare but you'll see the ground take a different color it'll be more red right it's got these long pine needles and these are quite different than the fur and the hemlock which are much smaller needles so when i see a spot like this that i've never seen before right here i can see three four five different pine trees and a bunch of saplings 
this is a good spot for me to have a look around and so I just come right off the trail and I'm gonna just peek my head into these woods where all these pine needles are laying and I'm looking for what I call a flag and that's like one really big large mushroom that's gonna catch your eye and then from there I will get down a little closer and start to look a little bit more sharp but I don't want to spend a ton of time here stumbling around looking for something that ain't here so I'm gonna just kind of do a quick cruise through this area yeah pants are getting a little wet the shoes I'm wearing are getting a little wet I just broke a branch with my shoulder Rawr. anyways I don't see any obvious big porcinis growing right here right now there will be flags out there will be large porcinis wherever they're growing there's going to be a huge mature one so i don't see any right off the bat i'm not going to spend a ton of time here but it's worth giving it a look when you see these kind of trees that are uh that grow with the you know these mycorrhizal mushrooms like the porcini they love the pines here so when i see a little stand of pine which are a little bit rare in these woods here's a pine um this is a good place to slow down so I just came across another mushroom that if you're out in the woods of the PNW right now, you might be encountering a lot of this one. They're really going crazy this year. I don't know what that is, but I've seen them in years past. And uh, what it is, is this. Have you seen these? Let me, let me flip this camera. So they're always growing off of a stick like this. And if you look, come on, man. There we go. It's got these pores underneath, no gills. It's a pore surface. And uh, this is called the black-footed polypore. You can see the little black foot on it. But there's other polypores named black-footed polypore too. So common names in the United States are not quite worked out, but some people call this the stalked polypore. Pisapis badius is the name in Latin of the stick-loving polypore. So... You know, if you want to remember that, you can tell your friends, oh, that's a piece of peas, bad, yes. All right, I just, uh, just coming down the trail, come across another one. Let's have a look at these. You've probably seen these growing in your yard or on the side of the trail or uh, in a neighborhood near you. And this little guy, you see that? Let me flip my... Oh, look at that. We're going to pull that up. This is a common studded puffball. So as this gets older, it's gonna be one of those things you used to step on as a kid and it squirts out that brown smoke. Uh, this is called a Lycoperidon perlatum. Um, that's the Latin name for common studded puffball. So these are good edibles. Um, all of the mushrooms in the Lycoperidon family are edible. And we open it up. Oh, that one's got the green. So it's turning to spores and it's still pretty wet. So this one, you do not want to eat that when it's like that. But uh, I see a couple more. These ones are pretty ripe. I think we'll look at this one. Oh, they're all detached. And just the way that this is wrinkly on the bottom leads me to know that inside these spores are going to be green. But if you were to cut this open and the flesh would be totally white inside, you would have yourself a decent edible. I, I just stepped off the trail because I'm kind of looking more porcini. You know, I'm in this area with the pine needles again and pine tree. What do I spy? I don't see porcini so much, but look at right down here. Oh man, they're hiding this here. Oh, that's got a big fat stalk. Look at that big old chanterelle. Oh, and it got all smushed on the bottom of this gunner. Look, it's got a root that's like trapping it in. And uh, I could probably wrench it out of there somehow. Let's see. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta get in there, you know? Sometimes you gotta get under it. Mm. Oh. There you go, some chanterelles. Too bad they're, these are kind of beaters because they were all smashed against that root. But you can see the hole that they were growing and look at all that mycelium so that is the mycelium that's the vegetative part of the fungus if you will uh, of cantharellus formosus actually i think these are cantharellus subulbitis they're pretty white so i think these are the white chanterelles and they'll still make a good stock for cooking rice with 
or putting in a stew or a soup. And so we're gonna put these in the basket. I see another one. Another one going right down here. Hello, buddy. Let's let's grab this. Ah. All right. So there we go. Chanterelles are out here. You just gotta look kind of close. Really healthy. Look at the veins on that. Very healthy. Beautiful mushroom. Pacific Golden Chanterelle. This is what you're looking for, boys and girls. I'm walking a little farther up in the forest. And I thought what I came across was a Russula, but it is not. The minute I grab that stem, I can feel how slimy that guy is. There's his friend going right there. This has some unique characteristics. Look at it, it's got yellow on the bottom of the stem. It's got, then it turns to white as it goes up the stipe. It's very sticky. It's got these gills underneath here. Let me flip the camera. So here we go. It's got these gills. They are attached to the stipe like that. Yellow, white, slimy, beautiful pink color. And this is known as a gomphidius. No good for eating. As you see one of these with these gills that look like that. And all these different colors going on. And it's very slimy and sticky. That's a gomphidius. And they're pretty to look at. Also oh, check this out. This is kind of a cool find. Ramiria or the coral fungi. And this is a golden one. Very pretty, and I'm seeing they're popping up all over right here. So, um, this is a beautiful mushroom, and coral mushroom are pretty common. There's over 200 different species of Ramiria coral mushroom. Look at there, they're trying to pop out everywhere. But some of them will really upset your guts, some of them not at all. I don't know which one's which, you know. Some people swear. They put a finger up in the air and they go, oh, yep, it's a golden one on the north side of the slope. That one's good to eat. I don't buy that stuff. The only way to really tell with Ramiria is under a microscope to know if it's going to be one that is considered toxic or not. And uh, by toxic, I just mean it's going to mess up your stomach. I had a friend who picked a bunch of them and he was like, nope, these are the good ones. You know, my uncle showed me in the woods. You know, he had some superstitious reason for believing that it was a good one to eat. And he ended up on the toilet for a couple days straight. And he told me he regretted his decision to eat those coral mushrooms. So, just another good reason why I should just leave it alone, pass it by. Oh, dude, I just came across a super interesting, cool mushroom. You guys will be excited to see this one. And these ones pop up here now and then, here in the PNW. And this one is known as Hydnellum pecchii, or the bleeding tooth fungi. This also has a common name, strawberries and cream, because it looks like... Some kind of a Danish pastry. Yeah, so check this guy out. This is called Hydnellium pecchii, or the bleeding tooth fungus. It was, a, it was actually named after a famous mycologist named Charles Horton Peck in the 1920s. Um, it's also been called Hydnellum diabolus, and that is Hydnellum devil. And uh, somebody thought that was pretty evil, but the truth is... This mushroom is not toxic, but it is a lot like cork or something. So certainly something you wouldn't want to eat. And if you look, there's these little red driplets. And when I touch one, it just kind of smears. And I guess you could say it looks a little like blood. But let's see what it tastes like. It's actually peppery. It's pretty peppery. Um, this is not a toxic mushroom. But uh, it has got this acrid, peppery taste that would turn a lot of people off. And uh, But it does have anticoagulant medicinal properties. So this mushroom could be used for medicinal purposes. And uh, let's flip the camera one more time. We'll take a look. So here's a young one, and this is a good example. This one's fairly young. It still has this red secretion coming out of it. And it's actually essentially just water that gets soaked up through the mushroom and through a pigmentation process in that mushroom, it turns it red. So it's not actually blood or anything. It's just water. And uh, 
right here's a good example of a young younger one and when they get older this is what they look like and it's just this big crusty brown thing you would not know that that is an older version of that well this one is pretty obvious it's starting to get pretty dark in the center there but when they're really young they're just pure white with red spots and as they mature they turn into this big ugly black brown conky thing another feature of Hydenellum pecchii is it's got these teeth under here kind of like a hedgehog mushroom or a sarcodon um, these Hydenellums, they all have these teeth hanging from the bottom this is where the spores come from and they fall out of these teeth and they are caught on the wind or on wildlife or humans or bugs or animals pick them and they shake their spores all over the place so anyways this is a super cool mushroom a lot of photographers after this one and a lot of people are like whoa that is the weirdest mushroom in the world and it, and it just might be one of the weirdest looking mushrooms in the whole world and we got them growing right here in the pnw so here's kind of an interesting find right down the trail from where we found that hydenellum pecchii and there's some broken stumps obviously but if you look right here, this is the sign of an Amanita. And look how it's got this universal veil still on top. It's gonna leave those white spots like it would on Amanita muscaria. This is much more yellow. And the way that these, this universal veil is in a big patch like this, makes me think it's something in the Gemata family, but nonetheless a dangerous Amanita. If you ever see this stuff on top of a mushroom, probably best advice, just leave it alone. Wow, look right here on the side of the trail. Just laying on the ground here. Probably fell off of the stump. But this big, huge, old gnarly looking thing. Yes, that is a mushroom. That is known as the dyer's polypore. It's really well known for making dye for clothing. So it's a, it's a good one because when, when they get old and mature like this is best, from what I understand, for dye mushrooms. So we're gonna grab this one and take it home. Phaeolus schwainitzii, or Phaeolus schwainitzii, the dyer's polypore. If you ever see this big old woody thing and these concentric rings kind of stacked up like flapjacks or something, that's what you're looking at. And this one is a good one for dyeing some clothing. Kind of a pretty green color, yellows and gold colors. Um, just to kind of show you that this year has been a little bit irregular, typically I'll find several pounds of golden chanterelles in this spot and i'm looking around here and uh i'm looking around here and i'm just not seeing any real obvious signs and then i look a little bit closer and just peeking out here can you see him oh he's just peeking out a little bit there's a beautiful golden chanterelle oh it kind of broke off but uh, that'll go in the basket. We'll just kind of hide that stump. And, uh, you know, but normally I'd find just tons of them right here. Here. Yeah, you can see him just barely poking his head out. And we'll grab him from the bottom. There we go. A couple of nice goldies. Very golden. Very pretty. There's one back there that looks like it got obliterated by some kind of an animal or something. Um, the squirrels out here got to eat too, you know. I got these beauties just popping out of the road here. Just on the gravel road. Uh, a couple of these pretty orange, orange looking mushrooms. And uh, very slimy, viscid caps. And uh, let's see what one of them is. I, I really don't want to pick them. They're so pretty. And I already know I don't want to take them with me. So I'm going to let them live. But these are another species of the Suillus. So, uh, you know, it's got those big old pores. But they're just popping out of this road and they just look too cool. I'm going to let those do their thing. Look at this. We came across this huge pile of bark. And oftentimes bark is a good place to find mushrooms. Whoa! And holy smokes. Look at this. Huge, big flush. Look at all these beautiful mushrooms. No, these are not magical mushrooms. Unfortunately for you, these are, oh, these are the sulfur tufts. Look how big those are. And they're really kind of green fluorescent looking. If you look at them right, this yellow, really kind of fluorescent yellow color. These are big ones, big sulfur tufts. 
Hyphaloma fasciculari. Uh, this is a toxic mushroom. We talked about those. We saw some little babies earlier. But uh, they grow in these huge troops like this. And too bad they aren't a good edible or useful really to humans in any way. But they definitely serve their purpose in nature. What that might be, I'm not sure. They just really help to decay matter. These are a saprotrophic mushroom, which means that they eat decaying matter and they break it down into reusable forest resources. So still an important mushroom, although you do not want this in your basket. Today we found some cauliflower mushrooms, some golden chanterelles, some white chanterelles, and a dyer's polypore that we're taking home. And we also got to look at that uh, bleeding tooth fungus. That was super cool. And a whole bunch of other interesting and cool mushrooms. So if you're finding value in these videos, hit that like button, smash the subscribe button. Thanks for watching Mushroom Wonderland. Peace out, my people.